After germination. Thinning out. About two to three weeks after your plants germinate, you must thin the plants down to two plants per station. Try and make sure you pull the plant out with the roots. Sometimes only one seed will germinate, sometimes none. But you must still try and make sure that there is an average of two plants to each planting hole. You can do this by leaving plants in the holes on either side of the empty hole. For example, where there is only one plant in a planting hole, leave three plants in the planting hole next to it. If there are no plants in a hole, leave three on both sides. This way, you still have an average of two plants per station. Never be tempted to not thin the plants. This will give you too high a population and you will get a lower yield than if you had thinned down to two. This can seem strange, but you will need to pray for God to give you wisdom and to trust in Him. No form of transplanting or gap filling should be done. Top dressing. Having applied our basal fertilizer before planting, we will then apply a nitrogen top dressing at about three weeks after germination. What is normally recommended is to split the top dressing with a five cup application at three weeks after germination and then a second five cup top dressing as the plants begin to tassel. This spreads the risk of leaching and loss of nutrients, especially in very wet periods. An organic option of applying chicken manure is also a good option. Chicken manure soup, which is made by hanging a bag of chicken manure in water for three weeks and then diluted 10 to 1, is very effective. This can be applied every second week for maximum reward. Place the top dressing using the cup into a hole made with a sharp stick, 10 centimeters from the plant, on the upslope side. This means if there is rain, the fertilizer will be washed towards the plant rather than away from it. It would be ideal to cover the fertilizer with a little bit of soil. Stalk borer treatment. 28 days after the first rains of the season is when the stalk borer larvae will hatch. This is when the larvae are at their most vulnerable and when a treatment should be applied. A chemical treatment is very cheap and easy to apply. Usually the chemical is in granular form and a small pinch is applied to the funnel of each plant. This treatment can be applied any time after thinning but preferably closer to a month after germination. Post-harvest stalk lodging is encouraged to break the life cycle of the stalk borer. If the May stalk is broken off at ground level during the harvesting process, this removes potential breeding sites. Weed control. Weed control is one aspect of farming where most people fail. Weeds are part of the curse of Genesis. We need to turn to God and ask Him to help. The discourager will want to overwhelm us with weeds, but if we ask God for wisdom, faith and help, this need not be the case. We need a new way of thinking about weeds. Our weed control and land preparation must start when we harvest the previous crop. It is imperative that we keep the weeds out until the conditions are too dry for any of them to germinate. By doing this, we are already preparing our land for the next season. All we have to do is knock down our crop residue evenly and we have our mulch or God's blanket for the next crop. This will deter most weeds from germinating. It is tidier and neater for harvesting. It also prevents late weeds from removing soil moisture and nutrients and prevents a new flush of weeds from being produced if we remove them before they set seed. After planting your next crop, look out for any early weeds and hoe them out as soon as you see them germinate. Weed the crop regularly. Do not let weeds grow or they will use up water and nutrients and affect the crop. It also takes less energy to hoe small weeds than larger ones and they will not have the opportunity to produce more seed, meaning that over time our weed pressure will diminish. 
If you are on time and do everything well and your stand is full with a good covering leaf canopy, you will only have to do four light weedings in your crop during the season. Remember, the principle of being on time is very important. Crop Rotation Crop rotation is the practice of growing different crops in the same land to improve soil fertility. It is a vital part of conservation farming. Crop rotation increases the soil fertility because legume crops such as beans and groundnuts add nitrogen back into the soil. This means you are able to use less fertilizer. Crop rotation means growing one crop in a piece of land one season and the next season changing to a different crop. There are different rotations you can use. For example, you can grow maize one year, then soya beans or groundnuts the next, then maize again the following year, as in this diagram. Rotation is a very important tool that can be used to control weeds, pests and diseases. By rotating crops from different families, we are able to break the life cycles of pests and diseases.